Hey, Pete. Yes. Are you actually here, or have we perfected holographic technology? Yes, I'm an avatar holograph. <laughs> I'm Adam Ennis. And I'm Peter Martin. And you're listening to the You'll Hear It podcast back at the Pod Cave. That's right. We've reassembled, well, by we, I mean somebody <laughs> else besides me, I would assume. Reassembled the Pod Cave, and we are back in here. It, you know what? It's not as, it kind of got aired out for the uh, the live session I think we had last week. Yeah, we did a, a big live concert here uh, with Jeffrey Keezer. And uh, what's it? Up, you know oh no! I, didn't, I just realized I didn't need the headphones because I'm actually physically s- sitting across from you. <laughs> um, we did a live a live session with Jeffrey Keezer and his trio here uh, last Thursday. Right, just awesome. We had a great crowd turn up. We had a, a great live stream on yes. the Open Studio uh, Facebook page. If you want to check out the full concert, you can go to the Facebook page on uh, just search for Open Studio in right. Facebook. Like us too while you're there. That's right. Give us a, a, a like, and give a subscribe. us a thumbs up, man. Yeah. It helps our ego. But uh, yeah, we had to disassemble the pod cave. And have you noticed they added ventilation, which I'm like, well, what are you trying to say? Well, that's what I was saying. It got aired out. Maybe it's it's part of the design now. So interesting to see what that'll do acoustically. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's going to affect that much. Yeah. Well, so I do have headphones on because we have a, a voicemail. Yes. Uh, someone went to youllhearit.com and left us, left us a voicemail on SpeakPipe. Let's check it out. Here we go. Hey, guys. It's Zoom from Vancouver again. Thanks for answering my previous questions. I listen to your podcast every morning while I'm getting ready for work. Uh, eight stars. Uh, my question today is uh, if you guys have any tips for playing uh, free, meaning uh, no core changes, no predetermined structure, uh, just pure improvisation. Um, so if you guys have any tips for that, I'm sure listening will be at number one as usual, uh, but would love to hear uh, six other tips if you have them. Thanks a lot. Peace. We are training them well. We are. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, I, the first, when he said, any tips for playing free, I was like, well, that's, especially when you're starting out, that's going to come easy in jazz. You're going to do a yeah. lot of gigs for free. You're not yeah. going to have to worry about yeah. that. Yeah. But uh, besides that obvious pun there, I would say number one is... Listen. Right. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not, not to reiterate, but the, really... Um, or to recapitulate, I guess. Ooh. Uh, the, the the thing about listening when you're playing free, and, and thanks so much for this question because this is an area that we we hit on a little bit, but I it's it's great to talk about and yeah. kind of iterate on, um, and um, just think about and and to, to discuss. But the of course we're always listening, but when you really go into a truly free situation, and we can talk about like kind of degrees of freeness, no changes, um, absolute freedom. It's very hard to achieve that. Um, but being in the moment, I think, becomes so important, yeah. you know, much more important than e- even the specific sort of melodic, you know, harmonic and rhythmic techniques that one is going to use. So I think a lot of the preparation for, for for getting there is similar to being able to improvise in a, in a number of different styles, so to speak. But the the ability to really be in the moment and to be listening both to what you're playing to what the moment needs and to what any other accompanying musicians that you have there becomes paramount really yeah i mean free playing can be some of the most challenging kind of of playing to actually pull off in a way that's that's interesting and you know and and you're right about listening and how important that is because you can't do anything pre-planned you know i mean or else you're just going to lose the vibe any kind of lick you try to throw out there is not going to be like it that's not how this works it's only good if there's communication yeah between you and the other musicians if you're in the moment like you said just just as much as you can be for as long as you can be it becomes almost this like meditation i don't really do this very much anymore i used to do it a lot when i was young right like like free playing i mean i mean you you do it in context of like a not free gig yeah but like you know me and my buddies used to do it endless hours into the night you know you have time on your hands like, dude let's just get yeah. together and just create man. <laughs> <laughs> we've been playing changes all day let's just, yeah yeah so but then there's it's interesting too because he asks in the question he kind of um, um mentions without changes and i would just say we we can definitely talk about that but i would just say that there is a whole way of playing free also that 
in, involves not planning out the changes and not having the structure of a progression of chord changes, but you might still end up playing something that sounds like it's an exact progression. And I think that's, I mean, Keith Jarrett kind of comes to yeah. mind. Well, you're sure. alluding to, too, it's the Wynton Marsalis uh, burnout, right. <laughs> C minor oh, well, that, burnout. I wasn't even thinking, you know? yeah, yeah, absolutely. But that's, that has that same kind of vibe, right? But that right? kind of has changes, even as a starting, it's, it's like playing free over yeah. some, some... There's like an idea of a change, idea, but they yeah. don't stay to it the whole right, time right. at all. But and I think, if anything, there's more of a rhythmic and uh, kind of structural thing within the form that's there that's, yeah, that, that kind of leaves harmonically very, very quickly. But there is a rhythmic foundation in that it's like usually 4-4, four, four, a certain tempo, that yeah. kind of thing. But when you're talking about like the Ornette Coleman style, the yeah. Eric Dolphy style of, I mean, sometimes there's even a head and then you just go into this free. Yeah. It just says free. Yeah. And <clears throat> what do you do? Um, you know, how do you how do you work on that? I mean, you know, I, I, the best way to work on that, to be prepared, is I think to make sure that you, I mean, it takes so much preparation to be good at that. You have to like really be on your textures, yeah. your colors, and yeah. like, and how they, not how they relate to a rhythm changes, which is, it's a simple formula in that, yeah. you know, if you're doing it to that, but how they relate to emotion and what yeah. you're trying to say and what you're trying to convey to your other bandmates and to the audience, you know, and how you fit into um, you know, the free ensemble. That's another thing that can be very challenging. Like, yep. you know, I think human nature is to want to always add, you know, and yep. sometimes like you don't have to do very much at all and you're, you're making a, a bigger contribution. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. The, the few, and I haven't done a lot of free playing, um, but I have done some and thinking back to the ones that I think that were most satisfying for us, you know, in terms of ensemble playing and, and most edifying, hopefully to the audience, it was definitely a less is more kind of thing. It was not. It was resisting that urge to overplay. And I think part of the the really number one listen will keep you in that sort of space. Because if you're listening, you. I mean, yeah, you can be playing and listening at the same time. But there's that more reflective kind of listening and thinking about not well, where am I in the changes because there is no changes. Yeah. But you are still saying where am I in the flow of the music? And remember that the chords and progressions. Harmonic progressions are not the only thing that, that, that delineate, you know, sort of that space-time continuum of music. There's all different other things. And the, the main thing that, that links up any kind of performance art is the fact that you're going from time A to time B. There's a beginning and then there's an end. What are you going to do to fill it up? Yeah. If you have chord changes, bebop chord changes or a blues or a symphony or a rondo or all these different, that that's just sort of a, a roadmap of how you get there. Yeah. But you are, we are in free place playing, still going from A to B. Yeah. You're just going without a map. But, but maybe we're making the map up as we go. Yeah, you know? and maybe we're like, oh, we're here at B, but no, I'm going to duck out and go to E. That's right. You know? And maybe we're making up what we're saying about free jazz as we go today, hey. much in the same way as one would. No, but it is. In it's like, you know, we, we're trying to be more free about it, even how we talk about this because um, – it's so easy to to say, well, how do you play free? And then now we're going to give you a whole bunch of rules. How do you play free? You, well, you're not yeah. free then. You know? you know what you could do also with this to get a little more in the weeds on some some details to maybe think about working on, even just listening for. Um, this is a composition um, exercise that mm -hmm. you've probably done too. But like, how does foggy sound? You know, like how does the, a foggy day like to get descriptive <laughs> in London town? Different foggy. What sorry. is what does breezy sound like on your instrument? Uh -huh. What does you know? Obviously, angry, dig happy, dig sad. Dig we can dig all dig do dig that. Dig but like, dig 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 dig. Oh, it's George Benson, <laughs> breezy. <laughs> sorry. But composers have to really yeah. think about this kind of thing. You know, like like what does perturbed sound like? What yeah. does impatient sound like? What does you know all these things that you might think about. Adding to your repertoire of textures and, you know, what is what is sandpaper sound like on your instrument? You yeah. know what I mean? Like it, it sounds a little hokey, but if you actually practice that and try to think of, you know, what what's in your head for those those textures, for those like moments, for those ideas, um, pictorial ideas, you can really come up with a nice arsenal of that kind of thing. And that works great with free stuff because, you, you know, you, you can stay away from melodic content that strongly implies something and, and be a little more, you know, ethereal with it. But it also works really great if you're just playing modern jazz or, or whatever, pop yeah. music, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like that well, stuff can come in handy. I mean, Herbie is like a master at that kind of stuff. Right. You know? Yeah, it's almost like sound effects that you can make with the instrument. And it's, it's very important to really think about your instrument and what it's capable of 
and stretching it to its boundaries when when you're into the kind of free playing so we think about piano it's sort of the natural time to go inside the piano maybe a little bit yeah. but you know much as a lot of great jazz piano you it doesn't have to only be when you're playing free yeah you know that can be at any time and i and i think that um you know i think successful free playing really takes advantage of really strong and confident melodic material at least at some parts so i guess that's something that you could work on the the thing about it is 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 you think oh well playing a simple beautiful melody isn't free well actually that's very free because you're not placing it over chord changes right i mean i always say ornette coleman was one of the best blues musicians of his generation because he would play these these really longing beautiful blues melodies you know during these free sections or whatever yeah and he was an intensely melodic player Um, so like when you're when you're playing piano and stuff this becomes a challenge because a lot of the techniques and sort of tricks and, and, and tactics that we use to, to convey different emotions are attached to, you know, harmonic movements and we can do it so easily. So it's not that you can't play a chord when you're playing free, but you have to be careful that you don't start to pull it back into like, well, let's play free. And then, oh, no, no, I, yeah, I know I'm playing the changes to Don Lee because I just happen to freely be hearing yeah, that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> just because you're in the habit of playing it. Another kind of concrete technique that you could check out, I, we've talked about this on the podcast because I've, I've had been fortunate enough to study with and play a bunch with George Garzon, mm-hmm. who has this whole approach to playing you know, outside of changes, completely free of changes, where he's not considering the harmony, even if he is playing a rhythm changes. Yep. And it's this triadic, triadic chromatic approach. And yep. you can look that up, Zoom, and, and check it out. It's George Garzon's triadic chromatic approach. And it's like this whole uh, approach of being able to go outside of, of you know, what, what we would consider harmony with these um, strung together triads. It's yep. really, really fun, and it's very challenging to do. Yeah, and I haven't go- I'm, I'm familiar with the concept. I've never actively practiced within that, but I like that to apply that a lot to free playing because of what we were just talking about, you know, melodies, simple, beautiful melodies, yeah. being able to use those in your free playing. And so, you know, the triad is always such a great foundation Super strong. for any kind of melody. Yeah. And now when you have the freedom to do any of 12 triads, um, and, and that's not even, you know, just 12 keys, of course, yeah. different inversions, di- di- different minor, diminished, major. Exactly. That can really be your foundation. Well, and when you string these together, not they're not, not randomly because there's some rules that, uh, you know, are involved with learning this. But when you start stringing these together completely, you know, devoid of any sense of, of chord changes or harmony, you start playing melodically in this really interesting way, in a way that you're thinking about the rhythm and the phrase, in the way that you're thinking about the shape of the overall line and the range that it's covering. And it's really freeing because, you know, you're not thinking about, okay, I have to play melodically over a C minor seven. You know what I mean? You're thinking about just that one thing. Yeah, yeah. And just, just one last thing, maybe we can end on this, is just remember that all the rules of putting together great musical art still apply. To playing free as in nah. <laughs> well no i mean a lot of people just take this to like i'm going to kind of zone out well we talk and we, and we started here too saying you know just in terms of like really concentration and attention to detail which to me those are linked up with listening i mean you can't be like concentrating on really creating something without listening yeah. and, and, and vice versa so in terms of like the techniques of building up drama and telling a story i think it's so important yep. and sometimes it gets lost so if you don't use those great elements of, of, of putting together something that's going to be edifying to the audience. You're going to end up playing free for free. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so uh, cool. good. Well, thanks for the question. Absolutely. And please keep the questions coming because why, Adam? We're running out of ideas. <laughs> well, partially. <laughs> we love our listeners. We do. And speaking of loving our listeners, if you want to show us a little love, hey. what are some ways you could do that, Adam? Well, Not you, you, I mean the listeners. You could go to <clears throat> iTunes or Google Podcasts and give us a, a big time rating and review. I've lost my voice. I, you have. I think people should actually go to uh, uh, Apple Podcasts. Go to Apple Podcasts? Yeah. I mean, you could do it on Google, but we don't know how to track. Do we, have we found... We need to get an Android device up in here because I feel like we're not... Andrew. Andrew, do you have an Android? <laughs> no. Oh, you do? He's okay, the engineer, start. man. Of course oh, yeah. he has Android. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. All right, start looking at Google Play. See if we're getting... <laughs> no, go wherever you want. But, you know, yeah. iTunes, we're kind of... Um, you said we were over 100 ratings and reviews. Is that possible? We're 105 ratings and 105. reviews. 105. Yeah. You know, yeah. Adam calls me at weird hours, like 3 in the morning. Guess what? Got another one. <laughs> but, yeah, give us a rating and review. And seven also, stars, although Zoom did give us eight. You know, he gave us eight do stars. Do what you want. You know, we're like seven minimum. But um, also, YouTube... What's up, YouTube... 
we're, we're getting a nice little following there and we're encouraging you to go in there and comment even if you don't watch us on YouTube no problem keep listening on the podcast but you can go to YouTube and, and comment today on any techniques or ways that you like to play freely yep and we um, are enjoying the discussion over there thank you guys for engaging with us there and also maybe give us a little thumbs up wait, wait, what do you do on YouTube it's a, you give it a like and a subscribe you can give it a subscribe like and you subscribe. can put the bell on which Ooh. means that you get notifications when a new episode is uh, released that's going next level put the bell on yeah. ring that bell ring the bell Baby, you can ring my bell you can oh, ring my bell we got a bell ringing <laughs> that's right thank you Dan alright well until tomorrow you'll hear it Thank you.